326, and we're going to divide that by 4. So what I mean is I'd like you to try to divide 4 into 3 first, but since 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 that's already too big, then I can't divide into 3. So then I consider 32. So 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 8 is 32. So I'll put the 8 up here, and it goes exactly the right amount of times. 8 times 4 is 32, so I write the 32 down here and subtract. 32 minus 32 is 0, and then I grab the next digit, which is a 6. And then I ask myself, okay, 4 times something is 6. Notice that this 6 down here, after I've subtracted and dragged down, it's bigger than 4. So I'm not done yet. I have to continue on with what I'm trying to do. 4 times something is 6. Well, 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And so that's too big. So I have to go back to 4 times 1 being 4. So I multiply 4 times 1 is 4 and subtract. 6 minus 4, counting down, 5, 4, 3, 2. 6 minus 4 is 2. Then I try to grab the next digit and bring it down, but there's nothing there. And then I check that 4 is less than 2, which is correct. So the answer is 81 with a remainder of 2. 81 remainder of 2. So for instance, if I have 326 footballs that I'm selling, and I put them on four different trucks, and I want to divide them evenly into four trucks, then 326 footballs means that every one of those trucks will get 81 footballs evenly. Right? But then I'll have two footballs left over that I can't distribute evenly, so I call it a remainder. That's what that means. All right, problem number two. Let's say we have 175, and I'm going to divide that by 5. 175 divided by 5. So, first digit. 5 times 1 is 5. That's already too big, so I can't, I can't divide into the first digit. So let's consider 17. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. That's too big. So it's 5 times 3 is 15. Multiply 5 times 3, get 15, and then subtract. 7 minus 5, just go down. Uh, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And so you get an answer of 2. 1 minus 1, 0. So the answer here, 17 minus 15, is 2. After I subtract, I grab the next digit and always bring it down. I have 25. Now, 5 times something is 25. What fits in here is 5 times 5 is 25. So I multiply and I subtract. 25 minus 25 is 0. I try to grab the next digit and bring it down, but there's nothing there. And I check that 0 is less than 5, which it is, so the remainder is 0. And so the answer is 35. There's no remainder, so I can just leave it off and say it's 35. So if I have 175 uh, you know, basketballs, and I'm giving them to five different teams, every team will get 35 basketballs, and there'll be nothing left over. That means everybody gets an equal amount, and the division happens with no remainder. All right, let's take a look at 555, and we'll divide that by 6. 555 divided by 6. So, first digit. 6 times 1 is 6. I've already blown it, so consider 55. Well, 6 times 5 is 30. That's way too low. So let's skip way ahead. Let's go to 6 times 10. That's 60. Let's go back up then. 6 times 9 is 54. That's exactly what fits under here. 6 times 9 is 54. So I multiply and I get 54. And 55 minus 54 is just 1. And then I drag the next digit down, which is a 5. All right. Now, 6 times something is 15. So 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 3 is 18. That's too big. So 6 times 2 is 12. Multiply 6 times 2 and get 12. Subtract. So 5 minus 2 is 3, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So the answer I get down there is 3. And there's no more digits to drag down, and 3 is less than 6. So I have remainder of 3. So I have 92 remainder of 3. 92 remainder of 3, and that was problem number 3. All right, let's cruise right along. What about 248, and we need to divide that by 4. 248 divided by 4. What do I do? First digit, 4 times 1 is 4. That's too big, so I consider now 24. 4 times, let's say, 3 is, what, 12. Uh, 4 times 4 is 16. Let's skip ahead. 4 times uh, 6 is, is exactly 24, so that's bingo. That's exactly what I need. 4 times 6, multiply, get 24, subtract. 24 minus 24 is 0. After I subtract, I grab the next digit, which is an 8, and now 4 times something is 8. Of course, it has to be a 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract. 8 minus 8 is 0. 
There's no other digit to drag down and zero is less than four, so the remainder is zero. So the answer to this is just 62 with no remainder. So the division happens perfectly with nothing left over. All right, almost to the halfway point. What about 513, and I'm gonna divide that by seven. 513 divided by seven. First digit, seven times one is seven, that's too big. So consider 51 then, right? Seven times seven is 49. Seven times eight is 56, that's too much. So seven times seven is 49. Multiply, write the 49 down and subtract. Now, if I wanted to subtract this thing properly, I'd have to borrow, but that's a pain. So instead of borrowing and cluttering everything up, let's start at 49 and count up because that'll tell us the difference. Start at 49, go up, 50, 51. There's only difference of two between those numbers. If I did it the other way and borrowed, this would be an 11, and then the five would become a four, and 11 minus nine is two, and then the four minus four would be zero, so I'd get the same answer. Subtract, drag the next number down, 23. So seven times three is 21, seven times four is 28, that's too large. So seven times three is 21, multiply, get my 21 down here, and subtract. Three minus one is two, two minus two is zero, of course. I've done my subtraction, grab the next digit, but there is no next digit, so I'm done with that. And then two is less than seven, so that's my remainder, remainder of two. 73, remainder of two. So let me just double check myself. If I had 513 buffaloes and I wanted to put them into seven zoos, then every zoo would have 73 buffalo evenly. Everybody would have the same amount, but I would still have two buffalo left over that I wouldn't be able to equally distribute to the zoos. I don't think you need that many buffaloes in the zoo, but hey, it's an example. Let's take a look at the number 104, and we'll divide that by four. 104 divided by four. First digit, four times one is four, so it doesn't go into here, so we consider both digits. Four times one is four. Four times two is eight. Four times three is 12. That's too high, so it has to be four times two. Multiply, four times two is eight, and subtract. Again, I'd have to borrow and all that, but it's too much work, just go down. So you can start at 10 and go down, or you could just start at eight and go up. Start at eight, nine, 10. There's a difference of two between here. And if you don't believe me, go and take 10 and subtract eight on your fingers if you need to, and you'll find that there's a difference of two. After we subtract, drag the four down, and we have 24. Four times something is 24, and the answer to that is six. Four times six is 24, so we multiply that and subtract 24 minus 24 is zero. Try to grab the next digit, but there is no next digit, so we're done, and the zero is less than the four, so it's a remainder of zero, so the answer is just 26. There is no remainder here. So that means if I had 104 lollipops and four different people, everybody gets 26 lollipops and there's nothing left over, no remainder. Everything divides evenly. That makes everybody happy. Only four more problems. What about 147? And we'll divide that by six. So first we try. Six times one is six, but that's too big for one, so we consider both. Six times two is 12. Six times three is 18. That's too big, so we go back to two. Six times two is 12. We multiply, and we get the 12, and we subtract. So four minus two is two. One minus one is zero, so we just have a two there. After the subtraction, we drag the next digit down, which is a seven. So six times something is 27. We know that six times four is 24, and we know that six times five is 30. That's too big, so we go back to six times four. Multiply six times four is 24, and subtract. What's the difference here? Of course, I can uh, start with 27. I'm sorry, seven and go down. Uh, six, five, four, three and we can get a three here, and the two minus two is a zero. So the difference here is three. I try to grab the next digit, but there is no next digit. Three is less than six, so that's the remainder. And so I just write down 24 remainder of three. So if I have 147 paper clips and six cups to put them in, then every one of these cups is going to get 24 paper clips, and after I do all of that and everything's even, I'm still gonna have three paper clips left over that I can't distribute evenly. So that is the remainder. All right, what about 763, and let's divide it by eight. So eight times one is eight, and that's too big, but we can't consider the first digit. We have to look at both. 
So we know that eight times eight is 64. So we have to go higher. Eight times nine is 72, right? Eight times 10 is 80, that's too big. So we back up to eight times nine. Eight times nine is 72, and then we subtract. Six minus two is five, four, and seven minus seven is zero. After we subtract, we grab the three and bring it down, and now we have 43. We have to get as close as we can to 43. We know that eight times five is 40, and eight times six is 48, but that's too big. So we back up to eight times five, multiply those, eight times five was 40, and we subtract. Three minus zero is three, four minus four is zero, so we've done the subtraction. We grab the next digit, but there is no next digit. Then we check three is less than eight, and it is, so the remainder is three. So we have 95 with a remainder, whoops, with a remainder of three, like this. 95 remainder of three. So if I had 763 ping pong balls and I gave it to eight different uh, people, everybody would get 95 ping pong balls evenly, but I would still have three ping pong balls left over that I couldn't distribute evenly to eight people. So we call it a remainder. All right, only two more problems. What about 450 pizzas? And we're going to go to five different uh, lock-ins, you know, at the high school. So how many uh, pizzas is each high school going to get? If I have 450 like this. So five times one is five. That's too big for the four. So we expand it and we look at 45. But we know that five times nine is 45, exactly. So we put a nine here. Then we multiply nine times five is 45. Subtract, 45 minus 45 is zero. After I subtract, I grab the next digit, which is also a zero then five times something is zero. The only thing that works is a zero because five times zero is zero. So I multiply five times zero is zero and I subtract and I again get zero. I grab the next digit, bring it down, but there is no next digit. And then I check that zero is less than five and it is, so the remainder is zero. So what I actually get here is 90. So if I do have 450 pizzas and five different high schools to deliver to, Every high school is going to get 90 pizzas with nothing left over, no remainder. Everybody gets an equal amount of pizza, which makes everybody happy. All right, I thought I was done. Actually, I have one more. Uh, let's see, that was number nine. Let's do one more. Sorry about that. One more. Let's take a look at 237, and we'll divide it evenly into eight different piles. What do we have? Eight times one is eight. That's too big. So we can't look at that. We look at 23. Eight times three is 24, that's too big. Eight times two is 16, so that has to be right. Eight times two, we write down the 16 and we subtract. Same thing, in order to do this, you have to borrow, make this a 13 and make this a one. You can do that, or you can just say, well, I just wanna find out the difference here, so let me start at 16 and count up to 23. Start at 16, go up. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. That's seven. The difference here is seven. If I borrowed, this would be a 13 and this would be a one. 13 minus six is seven. And then the one minus one is zero. You get the same answer by borrowing, all right? Next, after I subtract, I drag the seven down for 77. Eight times something is 77. We know that eight times eight is 64. We know that eight times nine is 72. We know that eight times 10 is 80, but that's too far. So we back up to nine and eight times nine is 72 and we subtract. Seven going down, six, five, means there's a remainder of five. Seven minus seven, zero. And there's no more digits to drag down and five is less than eight, so the remainder is five. And so the answer is 29 remainder of five. So if I had 237 horses and I had uh, eight different pastures to put them on, then if I was trying to do it evenly, every pasture would have 29 horses, right? But then I'd have five left over that I couldn't distribute evenly because I have eight pastures and only five horses. So we call it a remainder. So now we're finally done. We've now learned how to divide a three digit number by a one digit number. These are smaller numbers. All it means is the first digit here was always less than what's on the outside, always less than what's on the outside, always less than what's on the outside. And because of that, we always had a two digit answer. So now in the next lesson, we're going to again divide three digit numbers by one digit numbers, but I'm going to increase the size of these numbers a little bit. So then in the next lesson, we'll actually have three digit answers. It doesn't change too much what we're doing, but we do have to practice it. So when you feel like you're getting good at this, follow me on to the next lesson and we'll get more practice with dividing three digit numbers. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.